but I had sent him some beats and he approached me and said, yo, S, it's four beats I want to use, but I'm at the end of my budget. Who would have thought that would have turned a couple of months later into him introducing my music to Kanye because just because of the mere fact that I, I looked out for him in that situation. No producer had ever looked out for him like that. So because I blessed him in that situation, he felt like he needed to be a blessing to me. Let's be honest, you're not gonna find these videos anywhere else. Why? Uh, because I make them. So it would really help me out if you subscribe. If you've already subscribed, what also really helps is if you like the video and leave a comment. It's hard in the era of clickbait videos on YouTube and negativity in the producer community. And I appreciate your support, thank you so much. Yeah, I just wanna, I wanna introduce you um, to people who, who might not be all that familiar, which I'm okay. sure is the, the minority of, of attendees tonight. But and thank you for taking the time out, especially in the midst of, of this new venture uh, into the publishing world, uh, and not the not the kind of publishing we're familiar with. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> so sh shout out to you, uh, Symbolic One, uh, three time Grammy winning producer, multi platinum producer. I mean, you you see the plaques in the background. You see the Eminem, <laughs> you see the Logic. You see a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Watch the Throne, obviously is actually that's a, an amazing looking plaque. Wow. Oh yeah, that's like one of my favorite ones, bro. The uh let's see if you can see it. Yeah. Got a little glare on it. But yeah, that's that's like that's like one of my favorites. Do you know which com was that Jewel Box? Was that um Uh I think it was let me see if it says it on here. It was either Jewel Box or uh, DJ Gold. Oh yeah, DJ Gold, I think. They're really the only two left, I think. Yeah, I think so. I have yeah, so. It, it's I, I only have two and they one is from one and one is from the other. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Most of the time it's either, it's either one of those. I don't, I'm not familiar with any others. Yeah. I'm not either. I think I've, uh, I've searched around and it's kind of like the labels kind of just tell you, yeah, that's where you got to go. We yeah. sent the Man. And they, they going, bro, them plaques are going up like every, seem like every six months. The you price? Know, the price. Oh my goodness. It's getting out of hand. <laughs> well, if you want that one with the nice Renaissance framework, <laughs> you know, but yeah, if you if you just want the regular one, you know, it's like you spend your your, your two hundred dollars and you. Yeah, your, I think those ones that's two hundred is now like two seventy five. Oh, then I got lucky. I missed that by like six months. Yeah. Well, not so much because I want to get more of this year, so I'm gonna have to come out of pocket. Um. Anyway, uh, so you you started early on doing what a lot of producers are still doing, so going to producer events. Um, and these days you still have a lot of producer events. You have beat stars meetups, which are popular and you still of course have I standard events mm -hmm. and you participated in a lot of the I standard events early on. You were actually a winner. And then after, uh, the placements came, you became a, a traveling showcase judge. Mm -hmm. Yep. What, yeah. What year yep. was it when you won? Uh, uh it, it was, uh, 2008. It was the I standard beats on the beach in Miami. Uh, and that's the one I, I, I won, uh, was the one in Miami. Because a lot of, you know, th there are still events like that happening. Um, I standard events are great for networking. I think A3C is still great for networking. Um, but obviously getting out there is an expense and, and you got to leave yeah. your family and, and so forth. But would you recommend doing that to, to for producers these days who are on the fence about going to these events? Yeah, I, I would say just for the networking purposes. I know me back then, that, 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 was a, that was like, man, 12 years ago. Now, that's crazy just thinking about that. Yeah, so like back then, it was perfect because it was, it was fairly new, but my, my whole purpose for um, wanting to attend those e events was to be able to meet people. It was, it was never about winning the event. Of course you want to win the event, but that wasn't the main purpose or intent for me going. It was just to be able to go out there and I knew every showcase that I did, it would be someone of significance um, that would be there, whether it be an A&R that I was looking to meet or an exec at a label or, or, or whatever. You know, So I knew that if I could put myself in front of someone um, that could possibly open a door for me, I was, I was always down for that. So that was the reason for, that was my intent uh, behind getting in those uh, competitions is just to be over there, be, be able to go there and uh, showcase my music, but not only that, network with people that, that I was coming in contact uh, with while I was there. 
Nice. Yeah. And, and I mean, I still have the, my I standard relationships mm -hmm. from, from 12 years ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, those, those, those have never left. Um, shout out to everyone that's, that's tuning in now. I just want to make sure everyone knows uh, we do this. This is B club from music club.com. We do this every Tuesday, sign up at music club.com. Um, so you, you had, you have a crazy backstory, uh, that, like I said, I, I, I dove into, and I've, I really appreciate more now. I'm, I mean, I knew about it before, mm -hmm. but I think I just have a totally different, because I think we met in like 2010, 2009. Yeah, no, no, I was closer to 2009, 2010. Yeah. And it was just, you know, 10, 12 years later, I have a different appreciation for it. How long were you producing before you got the major placement? Man, bro. So I start, when I first started as far as um, like, diving into like the art of production uh, that was like 1994 of 95 or 95 so that's when i jumped into it 95 um or 96 and that placement happened in or where that situation happened in 2009 you know so that was roughly 14 years a lot of people get super <clears throat> excuse me impatient about not getting a placement their first year or not getting online beat sales their first their first six months and you, you spent a lot of time working yeah. on the craft but you weren't just you know sitting around waiting for a that, placement I don't, I don't think you were doing that that's exactly right man that that's the that's the thing like every every year i was devoted and um uh really tuned in to like just honing in on my craft and that 14 years was me planting a lot of seeds building a lot of relationships releasing a lot of projects and everything that i was doing was uh, i was having a lot of small successes that was getting me to the next phase of my career you know so um so it was 14 years of uh, getting to the next phase and connecting dots that was leading me up to that 14 years so it wasn't just like 14 years and like you say, waiting and um, not doing, not putting any work in and then something just happened. You know, everything that was happening within that, that time frame was the result of an action that I was taking or a seed that I was planting or a relationship that I was building that led to that moment. And when that moment happened, because of that 14 years of boot camp and training and learning and growing, I was prepared for that opportunity to stretch it out even till now, you know, uh, you know, because of what I learned in that 14 years. Yeah. And I mean, let's not minimize the, the magnitude of some of those quote, small unquote yeah. wins. Cause Oh man, those were everything, bro. But, but at the same time, to be fair, strange fruit project, which was your first group that you weren't doing small things. <laughs> I mean, in, in the independent hip hop world, I mean, it, it, it was everything from, Features with with Ghostface to um, getting signed to OM Records, which is a label that all of us, you know, because I was doing the same thing. All of us would have killed to be signed to that label. That was a a great place. Yeah, for at that time, pop, it was really pop, it, for producers especially. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, and I com I completely uh, agree with what you're saying. But but like when when I started when we started for a Strange Fruit Project in. 2001 so it was just basically an idea me and my cousin was like yo this is dope the music we making together this should be us it started as a side project because we had our own group my cousin and i and then uh my own who was another individual in the group he was a solo artist and then at the, and then the first project which had a female vocalist by the name of la soul she was a solo but we were making music together and we was like yo, this is something special about this. Let's do a, a side project, which over time became an, an album. It was supposed to be an EP. And um, I, actually, I actually speak about this. I have a chapter called Strange Fruit Project in my book. And I, I speak about how um, this idea of like, man, this is special. We should stick with this. Just that idea and and having a moment of like, man, how do we even press? Because we, we hadn't put anything out, you know? So it's like, okay, we're going to press a thousand CDs 
and we press a thousand CDs, get the thousand CDs back. And I, I vividly remember this six large boxes in my, in my uh, living room. And I'm like, okay, now what, you know, now what do I do? You know? So it was, it was a, um, it was a point of me being like, okay, let me take these and let's just start working it from the ground up. So putting CDs on consignment in stores, trying to book shows. You know, I remember booking our first show and literally no one came, not one person came to the show, you know? Uh, but then like gradually doing a show and then have, you know, 50 people here and then it go from there to a hundred. And then a year and a half later, we're touring the U S with like blue and exile and Miguel and, and, um, uh, Aloe black, who was all just underground artists at that time. And yeah. Then, what, what was the group he was in? I forget. It, he was in, um, uh, uh, <sighs> dang, it was, it's, it, uh, what was the group? Cause it was him and, um, uh, the producer, uh, exile, him and exile had a, had a group together. Yeah. What was I forgot name? the name of the group. I got to look it up now. Look that's, it up. Yeah. That's killing me. But yeah, it was, it was doing that. And then it's like I said earlier, one thing was taking us to the next thing and then you had the success. And then all of a sudden our project ends up in the hands of quest love from the roots who became a big fan of the group. And he passed it along to Erica Badu, who became a big fan of the group. We started working with her. And, you know, it was like one, one thing leading to the next thing. It was, yeah, it was Eminon. Eminon, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I remember, cause I remember when, um, when the Avicii records came out and everyone was like, Oh my God, Ella Black. Mm -hmm. And then someone kind of said, you know, he's from Eminon. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. Cause that was, <laughs> that was late nineties. Yeah. Late nineties. Uh huh. Early two thousands. Yeah, no, that's that's crazy. Um, speaking of connections, I thought this was interesting because you and Ilmine always had a, a, a solid working relationship, mm -hmm. you know, way back. Yep. And you're in Texas. He's in New York. Mm -hmm. How did that connection happen? Uh, we was we was we met on the forums, OK Player forums, Underground Hip Hop, um, and then he became a, a a fan of Strange Fruit Project. And uh, this was around 2003, you know, 2003 maybe. Uh, and yeah, we just was, we was just fans of each other's work by forms. And then we started mailing each other beat CDs, you know, cause the internet wasn't as strong to be able to send like a, a zip of beats to each other. So we was mailing beat CDs to each other. And uh, that led to us, you know, working together a lot. And then we, we, um, we started working with uh, a lot of our underground, a lot of underground MCs and groups that we were influenced by and loved. And that became a pro a collaborative project with Ill Mind called the Order One Mind. You know, um, yeah, so me and Ill, we've been, we've been at this thing a long time. So I just, I don't want to be delinquent on my duties here. Um, and, and I think we should keep talking about this throughout the conversation, but where do people find the, the book? How can they get it? Yeah, so the book, um, this is it, Free Focus Plan, Execute. Uh, it's available. You can get physicals right now on my site, symbolicone.com. That's S-Y-M-B-O-L-Y-C-O-N-E.com. And uh, I have eBooks that's on uh, Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, Apple Books, you know. And then my audio book, it will be out in the next few weeks. And uh, I'm excited about that, too. I have uh, I narrated it and um, I have Ron, Ron Fest did narrated my about the author and then I did composition. So there's a lot of like scoring and, and little things like that, unreleased beats and stuff in between chapters and stuff like that. So. So, yeah, um, I have a couple more questions and then I know a couple uh, questions have come in from from the chat. Okay. Um, but you brought up a rhyme fest name. Um, like I said, I, I get a lot of inquiries from producers who are just frustrated. Mm -hmm. Um, they don't know how to get big placements. And, you know, like you said, you, you didn't have, you didn't get big placements for, for nearly 15 years. Um, and rhyme fest name came up mm -hmm. and at the time working with rhyme fest wasn't considered a 
a big placement. I know he he did have a deal though when you were when you started working with him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he wasn't on. Uh, I think his his first album was on. Um, dang, what was his first album on? And I forgot what label, but it was a major label. But the second album that I was working on, it was like an independent deal, you know. So, um, but I was still a fan of his music. So, you know, when that situation came about, I was. I was happy to be working with him because I was just a fan of his, his work, you know, um, and not knowing that that situation is just working with him and, and, and also doing a deed for him because basically with that situation, he was at the end of his budget when we started working together and he approached me cause I had sent him some beats and he approached me and said, uh, yo S it's four beats I want to use, but I'm at the end of my budget. I can only pay you for two. You know, and I wasn't tripping. I was just like, yo, just pay me for the two and I'll just give you these other two. You can just use them. I'm not I'm not even tripping. So uh, so who would have thought that would have turned a couple of months later into him introducing my music to Kanye because just because of the mere fact that I, I looked out for him in that situation, which he told me later that uh, no producer had ever looked out for him like that. So because I blessed him in that situation, he felt like he needed to to. Um, uh, you know, be a blessing to me. I, I recently saw an Instagram post that you commented on about sampling. Uh, it made me laugh. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, basically how much, how much of a risk sampling is. And, and there's still this continued paranoia in the producer community surrounding sampling. Mm-hmm. Um, the record that kind of not started, but really, uh, catalyzed your your career i think that's fair to say yeah sample based yes very sample based. how do you feel about this paranoia that's this that's still going around in the producer community about sampling it's like a, a poison pill for a lot of people i always say if if it wasn't for those samples i used like kanye wouldn't have gravitated towards those joints so i'm not against sampling it's just knowing what you're going into before you actually do it you know at that time this was before i had any of course major records so you know i was heavy on sampling whatever i was you know digging i was a strong digger you know and um i was very well into like just you know sampling from vinyl you know it wasn't until i crossed over into the commercial world and started to realize and i got my co-publishing deal with rock nation and then I started to realize how much, um, you know, um, how, what's a good word for it? Um, minimizing my, uh, my publishing. You know, and what I mean by that is, for instance, with Rock Nation, I had a four song deal with them, which means that I have to, I have to, um, my song commitment to them is four songs, which is 400% because each song is 100%. So for the power record, because the samples took 80% of the record, I wound up getting 5% of the song. So, so only 5% of my share went towards that 400% or, to, or, or towards that 100% for that song. So you can kind of see, like, if I have to, complete 400% to get out of this deal. And that record is only 5% coming off of that 400. How long is going to take me to get out this deal? And then my next record, which was the Watch the Throne, I got like 1.5% of that record because the samples took 90% of the record. And then my Beyonce record, I got 10% of that record. So right now I'm at with these three records, you know, which if there was no sample and I was a producer, I would have about 150%. Those three records, I had um, 16.5%, and that's three major records. So that, so after those situations, it kind of put things in perspective for me. It's like, okay, I'm never going to get out of this deal if I continue sampling in these records or in these publishers are taking this kind of percentage away from, from my share on the publishing end. So it just changed my whole perspective, and I had to get uh, smarter at that point. And that was those three records that you just mentioned. I think that that was three Grammy wins, right? Uh, no, the only win for that was uh, the My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy album. 
Oh, oh, the Beyonce didn't get a Grammy. Uh, Beyonce, Beyonce didn't get a Grammy. So my three is uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, uh, the Eminem, uh, Marshall Mathers LP2, and then just yeah. recently, um, this year, I got for the Kirk Franklin album, Love Live, Love Live, or Long Live Love album. Yeah, I saw that he won it. He's been winning. He, he quietly wins yeah, Grammys he, all he, the time. He, He's, he, he kills in the gospel world. Now's a good time to ask this. Um, I've never won a Grammy. Is it like a, a RIAA plaque where you still got to pay for the physical award? Yeah, well, well, actually with the, man, it's the, the actual trophy. Like, they've changed the rules to where, like, if it's an album category, you have to have worked or produced at least 51% of that record to get the actual trophy. You know, oh, wow. Great, yeah, which is crazy because prior, you know, dec- uh, years back, it was like as long as you own that album, you know, you get the trophy. But I think it was they was giving so many out, you know, and then, of course, as time progressed, you have more people working on albums now because it's more um, collaborative now, a lot more collaborative, you know. So they like, man, we're not going to be giving all these people just com- just imagine on a Kanye album now. <laughs> Yeah. How many trophies they would have to give out. So, you know, so most of the wins are um, the certificates, unless you worked on at least 51% of that, or produced at least 50, uh, or own at least 51% of the album as far as publishing shares, writer shares. Did that change before you got the first one? Yeah. Dang. Crazy. Because I, I had a colleague who got a Grammy and couldn't, pay for it because it was the, the physical yeah, got, award yeah, was... it's, it's crazy man it's it's so crazy how they how they do it uh now if it's a song you know if you're if you is it for if it's for a song in the big category then it's different but okay but for the album it's, it's yeah they changed the rules on that 